How's it going folks? Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit of a harvest one. I've had a load of people ask how the sweet potatoes are going in the aquaponics. So we're up to about the 15th or 16th week mark now, which is about generally how long sweet potatoes take from planting to harvest in our climate. So I'm going to uh, pull them out. They've actually been in a lot longer, but these guys are ones that I did a little bit of an experiment with, which I'll add that little bit in here now. So you may remember from the last video, um, I had a mass of sweet potato vine just growing out of the corner of the grow bed here. Well, that is something that has since been rectified. I've given the uh, plant a massive haircut and thrown all the runners down the back. And what I'm going to do is do something that has been suggested by a few people now, and that is burying, if I can just set this camera up, um, burying a load of or oh, a couple of these runners underneath the clay. Um, there is a video by Matt, g'day Matt if you're watching, um, where he basically found that by burying these runners themselves under the clay um, and with the wet media, or well, down in the wet zone of the media, that he had roots going down into the grow beds. And those roots ended up forming little sweet potatoes. So I thought I'd give it a crack. Um, as I've mentioned, I have grown sweet potato in the aquaponics before previously, and I didn't have much luck with any rhizome in the beds themselves. We had a couple of small ones, but nothing too massive. So I don't think these are going to sit down too well. Get a little bit forceful here. Um, might have to actually peg them down, I think. Um, but hopefully the plan is that these guys will send roots down from these little leaf sections here, these little leaf junctions, and set some sweet potatoes themselves. And hopefully, I can get it down deep enough. And it's gonna stay under the clay there. And there is another one, just a very small one on this side over here. Uh, by the way, these chives are all still aphid free, just to let you know. Uh, this one here, same thing, just push it right down. And I will come back and continue to push these tips under as well. And I will definitely keep you all updated in future videos on how these go. So that's the start of it, I suppose. And as you can see, the, the water does come up to like within an inch or 25 millimeters from the top of the bed here. And the plan is that um, these uh, white beetroot over on this side here, they will be coming out soon. And I'm thinking I might just let these sweet potatoes take over this whole top of the bed just as a bit of an experiment to see how they go. So today we're basically just gonna see what the yield is by burying over those little runners there. So uh, fingers across, we're going to get something, but I'm not holding out much hope. I don't think we're going to get anything anywhere near as large as the sweet potato grown in the soil pouch over in the bathtub bed. But yeah, fingers crossed, we're going to get a, a few small ones that we can toss in to make a bit of a warm salad up or something like that. And if you do want to check out that mammoth sweet potato harvest video, there will be a link down in the description description below for you to suss out after we finish off here. Uh, just before we get into it, I just firstly wanted to thank everyone who has purchased our Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. It's a guide packed full of information. There's almost five hours of video tutorials already added to the guide with more on their way. Our downloads are just being added as well. So if you're just new to aquaponics, definitely have a gander at it. Uh, there'll be a link up in the corner there, also down in the description, and see if this sort of guide is right for you. $20 US, it's a fraction of the cost of any other online um, course or guide that you can get at the moment. So definitely check it out if you're new to aquaponics. So I'll stop spruiking. Uh, we'll mount the phone on my little handy cam and we'll go over and look at the uh, sweet spuds. I have a gander at the sweet spuds. Uh, <laughs> I trimmed these back just a matter of weeks ago and included it on a video and they need to be done yet again obviously because they're growing down on the ground so rather than um you know trying to save any of this we're going to pull the whole lot out because i have some brassica seedlings i'd like to put in this large bed uh, this bed is basically double the um the length of an ibc holds around about 600 liters of media or roughly around about oh, that many gallons and yeah, it gives me two square meters of growing space. So we're gonna pop a lot of brassicas in here. So these sweet potatoes have to come out. I'm just looking in here now, see if I can find any, but I can't see any in here. We've had a number of hawk moth caterpillars on here. Um, I came through the other day when I was filming a uh, bit of an update for supporters and found a couple on there, came down later and found even more. We have had grasshoppers feed on them here and there. You can, oh, well, there we go. There's one right there. Fed one of these to a prank mantis this morning. That was really cool to watch. But anyway, I digress. Um, they're about the only pests we get um, feeding on these sweet potato leaves. So before I get started 
I thought I'd give you just a little bit of a look at some of these um, buried root sections. And you can see there's not really much sign of any tubers growth down in there. But who knows, it may be further down in the bed. Uh, these are a flood and drain bed as well, so there is a uh, wet zone through the whole um, strata of the bed, if you like. A uh, little bit of water stays down the bottom all the time, but it basically floods and drains. Things that don't like a wet root get that dry period a couple of times an hour, so it's one of the advantages I see over uh, constant flood beds. But anyway, enough of that. Oh, one other thing I have done is I've grabbed a little container to put any other caterpillars in that we come across. So we'll feed them all to the fish at the end. So here we go folks, getting stuck into it now. Now a lot of people have um, said to me, why don't you save the greens? If you can save the greens, you know, you can eat them and all that sort of thing. Uh, listen folks, there is that much greens there. Um, there's no point saving all of them. We have taken bits and pieces off and we've thrown them into stir fries and that sort of thing. It even makes a good spinach substitute for things like frittatas and that sort of thing. But for anyone out there who is into uh, their sweet potato greens and has an aquaponic system, I would highly recommend growing it this way because seriously folks, you just can't can't keep on top of this stuff if all you're after is the greens. So there we go folks, that's what I've left just so we can find where the roots may be going down into the media. It's going to be fun to dig through that. Over the back there are a couple of sweet peppers or capsicums that fell off my little dwarf plant there. Uh, just got overgrown by the sweet potato. It's actually growing over the edge of the bed there, growing towards the sump. And down here are the slips that I started from the sweet potato that was growing in that bathtub bed there. And over here we have a um, couple more large caterpillars to feed the fish at the end. So I might just move them to one side so the butcher birds don't get them. But anyway, I'm going to set the camera back up and we'll dig through here and see what sort of spuds we can find. So what I thought we might do is we'll start over here at theoretically the newest growth and hope the dog next door decides to have a break soon. And over in that far corner is where the original plant came from, but I'll give you a close up of that when we get to there. Just move my trusty knife. Now the easiest way I can see to harvest this is just to pull it out. Uh, keeping in mind that everyone was recommending that I bury these slips. And that's what will cause the tubers to form. And so far nothing. And there is a very high possibility if there are any tubers on here they may break off below clay. So I'll have a bit of a dig around there in the end as well. But so far, not a skerrick of a tuber. That's rather disappointing. Nope, again, nothing. Got the basket here and everything. Loads of roots. And that's about it. Oh, that's, that's very disappointing. All these um, roots, by the way, I think these guys are small enough that they're not going to form new plants. And if they do, we'll just pull them as we see them um, sprout. They're going to become worm food for all the compost worms in here. So I'm not overly stressed about leaving too many in there. Look what I found. Oh, another one. Someone was hiding. Come on, pop in the... There we go. We've well and truly passed the, um, the three that I... I think I put three down on the original video. Underneath the surface. And I see no potatoes. I'm just separating that from the mother so I can give you a decent look at that, folks. nothing at the end of that one either. Well I'll be. Generally you'll put the potato will be at the end of a thicker stem. Something like that may have a potato at the end of it but I very much doubt it. Let it go down down here. Actually almost to the bottom. Yeah no there's nothing there. Can't feel anything down in there. Yeah I'm lifting up the muck and there there you go folks. Um, you will get mucky water in aquaponics. That could be a mixture of decomposing organic matter, uh, some of the fish poop that makes it through the system, uh, the filters, because the, the filters aren't commercial filters, they're just DIY ones, and also castings from the worms. So you always end up with muck in the bed. That's one of the reasons I took the bell siphon out. So we'll get a dribble over the standpipe and a lot of this will filter out between here and the outlet. And guess what I just found? Another snail. Another snail. There we go. So, you reckon you're going to get something? Oh, my fingers, fingers are crossed we're going to get something. Uh, you bet, okay. Bianca's, Bianca's got money on, we don't. If Bianca wins, some of those hornworms go to the butcher birds, and if yes. I win, they all go to the fish. How's that? Yes. Good deal? Good deal.
This is coming up far too easy. Look at that. There you go, folks. That's what can happen if you leave a plant in an aquaponic system too long. You end up with this happening here. And if you can see from that muck down the bottom, it tends to become a little bit of a filter. It grabs onto those solids and keeps them there. And if you don't have good water exchange, it can go anaerobic. Uh, mind you, it doesn't happen all the time, but can happen. And I like to play it safe for the sake of the fish and the system health. And I don't think the birds are getting, oh, hang on. If there's none, the birds get some, that's right. Yeah. And I can't see anything in there. Ladies and thank you. Lady says thank you. <laughs> Lady's the name of our butcher bird. But there you go, folks. Look at all that muck in there. And there are no sweet potatoes in there whatsoever. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty much all it for this harvest. And um, as to those people who were saying bury the vines, I think maybe a different variety may do better. And I will be keeping these guys in a pouch over our winter and they will, um, one of them will go into either this aquaponic system or the next one we build just to see maybe if it's a uh, variety thing because we've never really been too happy about the yield from these purple fleshed sweet potatoes anyway, have we babe? They've, I don't know if you heard B, but she said no, definitely not. So I've taken a bit of a road trip down the back folks under the lime tree now that Bianca's cleared it out a bit and I have another lot of those sweet potatoes growing in a root pouch. We'll have a bit of a dig through here just so I can give you at least a small harvest. Just pull this out from the top and see what we get. Look at that, a little half eaten sweet potato and further down nothing much at all either but I will tip it out onto a tray uh, just so we can see if there's anything it has grown through the root pouch and into the sand below. Down in the sand, it's a slightly different story. We have a massive purple sweet potato. Will you look at that? Let's dig through here a little bit further. There we go, we've got a few more roots going down this way, so we'll see what's down here. I'm not thinking there's going to be much, if anything. Up all the way towards the back of the bathtub, there's nothing. So I'm just going to chase those roots down towards the end of the bed and I'll um, come back and show you the total harvest. Before we sum it all up, these are the tubers I found at the other end of the um, sand bathtub. So that is the yield all up and it didn't even come from the aquaponics. Just slightly disappointing if I do say so myself. I was expecting, you know, at least half a dozen something that size coming out of the aquaponics. But such is, like I said earlier, that purple potato that came from the bathtub bed they're the slips I've started in the uh, black bed behind me here and that's what we'll be uh, planning out for next season's crop. They will survive through our winter here so I'll just leave them in a uh, root pouch until spring. So yes, Bianca did win the bet and I do concede she was wiser than I and we got no sweet potatoes but such is life. I'm more than happy though to run these experiments for folks uh, even though we didn't get a great yield out of it tuber wise, you know, it helps you folks out understand a little bit more about growing in aquaponics. And if you do check out the Home Farm Ideas video where the slips, oh sorry, the slips, the vine was buried under the media, uh, you will get an idea of what can happen with certain varieties and fingers crossed that will happen for us next season. But yeah, just not a big fan of these purple ones. And I can just show you as well by breaking them open. But as you can see, it's definitely not the dark purple that is in a lot of the advertisements for this variety of sweet potato. So if you do want to see some successful aquaponic harvest, I will put a playlist down in the description at the end of the video and a little link will pop up there if you want to suss that out. Uh, it can be done, I just got to uh, find a slightly better method to do it and I'm thinking soil dual root zone is the way to go. So I will pretty much will leave it there. Thanks once more to everyone who has bought the guide. Thank you to the fantastic folks who are supporting us through the subscription services, YouTube membership, and our patrons over on our Farm Your Own Yard website. Need to breathe. Also too, thank you to the gorgeous Bianca for helping me out today. And as always, thank you to all you folks who come along every week, thumb the videos up, leave your comments down below, and share them around with your family and friends. I really do appreciate the support, folks, from all of you. But I will leave it there. Do hope you're all well and happy and your aquaponics is booming. And I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing. So there are the grubs we got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six large ones. So we'll give four to the fish and two to Lady. Our oh, Lady can have three. She can have this tiny little one here. 
so she can have the green one and that tiny one. Okay. And uh, we'll pop these four in the tank. Uh, I think these guys are still hungry. Not 100% sure. First one in. Whoop. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Might need to stick him out. Oop, <laughs> over to the back of the tank. I saw that one too. And number three. Anyone want him? No. Oh, he missed him. Someone else grabbed him just down that side. I balked the anchor and dropped him. Oh. Alright, hold on to him. Next one, see if we can catch a fish. Oh, everyone's a bit shy now. Oh, took a nibble. Oh, there we go. So there we go. And these last few can go up to the butcher bird a bit later.